This is a free live Redeem Your Voice Camp. What Redeem Your Voice Camp is part of the Kingdom Mentor Academy, where we really believe that you have a powerful voice. That your voice is meant to be heard by the nations. We are so excited. Uh, you know, this is one of those, how do you say it? Um, moments of connecting. If anyone has listened to me at all, you know I'm really big about finding friends and that you can find them on Instagram. Share your little bit how you found me. You about, so about nine years ago, I was a uh, first time mom, had been a nanny for many years and um, found myself in a frantic state with my energetic two-year-old. And my husband thrust a stack of money in my hand and said, get out of here, leave, and don't come back until you feel better. And, he didn't um, tell and leave for good. You, you, you went there. No, 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 just, no, no, listen, okay. yes. get your hair done, get your nails done, get something done. <laughs> do something and feel better. And when you feel better, come home. <laughs> so I did, and I ended up in Starbucks and I love Starbucks and uh, was sitting there with my venti latte and all of a sudden Starbucks no longer smelled like Starbucks. I couldn't smell any coffee, none, zilch. And the whole place smelled of the sweetest red wine I've ever smelled. And I'm breathing, drinking, trying to drink the air. I mean, it was, I must have looked ridiculous. And, um, and I said, what is this, Lord? And he said, I am the vine. Oh. And shortly after that, I encountered a message from you, Teresa, on Instagram or Facebook. I don't even know. But we didn't know each other. No, we did not know each other. And you were writing messages that were echoing what I was hearing from the Lord on my own. And you were signing them the vine dresser, which grabbed my attention so strongly because that's what the Lord had been saying to me. He's been talking to me about the reason he talks so much about wine. And, um, and, and so it was just revelatory and overwhelming. Well, let's fast forward nine years um, <laughs> and walking through what I'm walking through right now in my personal life. And I was sitting before the Lord just a few nights ago and, and I recalled a dream. I was just meditating on the goodness of God. And I recalled a dream that I had where you guys, you and your husband were in it. And the night before you had posted a thing about 27 years of marriage, and it was a beautiful encouraging, inspiring post. And, um, and so I, I was sitting there and I remembered I had this dream that I was in a parking lot. You drove past me, you had your windows down and you pulled near my car and Dave reached out his hand and said, peace. peace. That was it. And, um, and at that time in the dream, I felt like that was a word over the situation in my life. And so I, um, God, you were bold. You were bold. Who did you, who did you DM that? I DM'd you. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm sitting there in the presence of the Lord and, and I hear the Holy Spirit say, you need to tell her yeah. about her role in this testimony that I'm weaving in your life. And I was like, oh geez, like she, you know, she doesn't know me personally. I could be some crazy wacko person. And that <laughs> happens on, you know, with, that just happens when you're a, a but a you have the I have, you can have the spirit of discernment like hey this is the real deal <laughs> yeah. let me give you my version of it because you got to the point sure. where you found me so I got up one morning and spent some time in the word and believe me it's hard not to reach for the phones first and see what's going on, on Instagram but I did I spent some time in the word I, it was a little earlier than I normally get up I'm a late riser and I so I had time in the word and I had time in the coffee and this long text comes down. I'm Morty. I like long texts. Okay. And all I can tell you is I felt the presence of God. And when she said, your husband said, peace, those of you who know my husband, he's famous for that handshake. He won't shake you like this. And he'll go, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. So this is how we get to this point which I'm so excited because it wasn't until a lot further down that I realized she has Finding Your Voice logo. I have Finding Your Voice logo. But Grace has a different way of presenting it. So 
those of you joining us, I just thank you. This is going to be exciting. It's going to be like we got a cup of coffee and we want you to come along as we, as you can see, we're going to have no problems talking back and forth. Anyway, Grace is, uh, has a passion, as she said, really for uh, linking your powerful voices. Yes. And I would say with their identity, yes. but the actual vocal techniques, is that yeah. correct? which is actually inextricably intertwined. Um, I find people who, you teach a lot about trauma. I find that um, trauma significantly affects your physical voice. Wow. Oftentimes, that's, um, that's something. specifically with women, if they've had severe trauma in their childhood, their voice will not mature past the trauma. Okay. And so, um, wow, so that's interesting. It is. Ooh. And so you have to therapeutically work through the development of the adult voice. Okay. And, and that comes from just finding the breath, which is where I start. I, my, my, my personal saying that I've coined and say over and over to everybody all the time is the voice is the breath. The breath is the voice. You cannot separate the two. Okay. And I love that about the physical aspect, because quite frankly, you can't separate your message from the breath of the Holy Spirit either. That's right. Let me, let me, so, let me, let me not stop you, but let me sure. dig a little deeper. Let me, and let me, let me touch on trauma. I'm interrupting sure. you rudely. Sure. Uh, we're real big at the Kingdom Mentor Academy and walking through the Redeem Your Voice of getting over the drama, the trauma. So yeah. we've worked extensively with these ladies and being able to go through uh, what I call the FRP process, being able to, okay, this is, I need, this does not resonate with faith, hope, and love. And I'm going to bring it into reality because if I right. stuff it, it's going to be a fertile soil. But then as I face it, I'm bringing in the promises of God. Yeah, That's yeah. for the internal. Tell me again, how does that affect our voices? Well, when trauma occurs, the body responds. Okay. At a cellular level, the body responds. Right. You can, you can hold trauma in your uh, lymphatic system, in your mm -hmm. skeletory system, in your... It, all of it connects. And um, the Bible says in Proverbs that a broken heart is like rottenness to the bones. Wow. Um, yeah. it, it literally works a decaying process in our body. Okay. And oftentimes what happens vocally is um, a type of unconscious regression in the voice. Wow. And, and so... Um, instead of learning to step, you have to change the way you operate with your voice as it begins to grow and develop. And you have to be comfortable as your voice changes tone and timbre and, and pitch. And um, when you have been traumatized at an early age, it's difficult mentally to mature out of that because you don't feel powerful. You feel victimized. And what happens is subconsciously, these muscles tighten. Okay. So you're working in a constant state of tension you're completely unaware of. Right. And you're not using the power of the breath because you don't even, it's, a, it's completely unconscious, but you're not releasing yourself into that. You're not, okay. and you have to yield to the breath. You okay. You have to yield let to the breath. Flow. Okay. I'm gonna, I went through something very traumatic. Uh, the beginning of the year, I fell down the stairs, halfway down, massive, and some other things. And so I knew I was going through trauma in a different way. I mean, I always taught about trauma emotionally, but I'm like, okay, when I get to the other side of this, I'm gonna be able to talk about trauma physically. So I'm gonna be your student. In the last uh, three or four months, thank you for a microphone, I have felt like my voice sounded like it was strained. We talked about the coughing and I know coffee and cream. So this is yeah. a different place. Yeah. Yeah. Even now, um, and I used to be, excuse me guys, I used to be on the radio 15 and a half years and I knew I felt I could feel this uh, depth, of course, thank you for, you know, microphones and that could yank your voice up to sound a little deeper. When I get excited, I get, my voice gets high. Like right now, as I'm talking to you, I feel a strain in my voice. What would you say to me? We'll just 
let's just have coffee and everyone can join along because maybe you could, this will help you. Great. As I hear you talk, I hear the position of your voice here. Here. Okay. Here. All right. And, um, and what I am perceiving is there is some tension here that you're not aware of. And I'm I, not aware of it because I don't feel tense there. So no, no, I, I'm guessing you probably don't. Most of us don't. When we have tension, it's usually okay. subconscious. Um, okay. But if you would do okay. some physical movements to find a different position for your voice, I think you would feel that shift. Okay. Uh, one of those movements, if I could get super uncomfortable here, um, is... Super One uncomfortable. Really I'm going to back up so you can see me. But see, I'm, I'm her patient right now. So let's, <laughs> let's enjoy this moment. I'm, what okay. you can't see, and I can't adjust this very well, is my legs are spread as wide as they can go. And then I would put my hands like this and bend until my knees are actually embracing my elbows. So the elbows are pressing against the inside of the knees. Okay. And then I would take some very deep, intentional low breaths okay i'm gonna disappear and do that haha <laughs> okay and you want to feel your waist expand and no movement in the chest or shoulders okay all right i'm back did you feel that really deep i felt i felt um i felt whatever i felt my waist and what you said expand yes. yeah <clears throat> okay yeah. now what am i supposed to do so now once you find the breath in the waist area, you want to okay. find it real low like that. All right. Then you're going to work on positioning the breath up here instead of here. Mm. So you want the voice to come from here. We call this that's the beautiful. mass area. That's beautiful. So, um, so that's why I can go around my room with great... Uh, my house with great breath because I'm praising the Lord and it's coming. The praise is coming from here. There you go. There okay. you go. Yeah. Does, does my voice sound any better? I'm trying not to, I, I try not to give my radio voice because I really don't have a radio voice. <laughs> yeah. Like you're using your radio voice. No, this is me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I get so that. So as you do that, the, the tone of your voice will clarify. Okay. And it will feel less uh cumbersome through this area and it almost feels like you bypass your throat area completely and the voice you can feel it vibrate in the forehead in the nose in the sinus area specifically is where you want the voice to vibrate from okay let me try that okay i'm gonna say what i i'm gonna give you my 45 second elevator pitch hey okay. i'm Teresa. i'm a kingdom mentor who is passionate to help you find your voice, share your voice from a place of identity. And if you want to market your voice, I help you grow your brand online with the care strategy. Did you see any difference? Okay. I felt said, it a little bit different. When you said find your voice, yeah. and in the words you said after that, you were on target. Then you said, and, and you went right into the throat tension. Did you wow. feel shift? Well, um, that's good because the marketing side of my business is something new. I mean, I'm pivoting there. I've been in marketing forever, doing marketing for other people, but I'm, I'm trying to focus what I'm trying to teach uh, people the basic model of marketing online, then they can either do it themselves or they can find the right virtual assistants to assist them. Yeah. Well, it's got a little high on that, didn't I? Uh huh. But it's changing. You're adjusting okay. it as you're okay. speaking. Which is so good. it's coming from here. Mm -hmm. And share with us how you truly believe. I believe so strongly with the vine dresser words: "No strive, simply abide." Yeah. So you know, you tell us, talk to us about that place of rest mm -hmm. that your voice can come mm -hmm. from. Um, I remember the first time I experienced that place. Uh, this was after probably seven years of intensive training of okay. my own voice. And I had a moment in a lesson. I was singing an aria with my professor. And I got to a point in the aria where my voice hit a note 
and I felt like I had lost all control and I felt like I had just released the worst sound I'd ever released <laughs> in my life. Okay. And my voice teacher was ecstatic. Okay. She said, that, that right there, you hit it right there on target. That was the place. And I could, I, I, that was the most out of control of my voice I'd ever felt. Wow. And, and I thought I need to have some, uh, some stakehold in this. I need to have some measure of control over what I'm doing. This floaty thing out here where I, I don't, I don't feel like I have a handle on it doesn't feel right. And it didn't sound right to me either because what I hear vibrating inside of this space of resonance for me is not at all what you hear. And what you hear in your voice is not at all what I hear. So you have to learn to trust a professional voice outside of yours with the perspective of knowledge, knowing what they're listening for. And then you have to just go, okay, I trust you, I yield. You know, even when we were doing some promo work with you and I was doing the editing and when I edit, I'm a way more f focused on people's voices. And I noticed, I was like, now she's got an anointed voice. No doubt about that, but there's depth to that voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, where has my depth gone? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it might be because I really try to stand up straight. Thank you, mom, if you're listening. I really try to sit up straight, which in a sense could, my focus is here instead of here, correct? Mm -hmm. now, now, okay, so I'm talk on, I talk online. I talk, I talk, I like microphones. What about someone uh, who just wants to uh, sound more powerful, not from the ego sense, but from the sense of whether they're at home, a mother, or whether they are a minister and they want to be able to, you know, say a prophetic word without sounding like sure. Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Um, what, what, what just general thing would you say to them? It might be very similar than what you're saying to me, your, your patient. Sure. Your <laughs> um, one of the things I would say is to practice finding the voice. So we're going to practice finding the voice. And one of the best ways to practice is to laugh. Oh, I um, love to laugh. Okay. When I, when I work on, uh, when I work with younger children, okay. Um, especially in choirs, I talk to them about football because in, in my world, they love football. And when I, especially this is how I get the boy's attention. Because if I'm on the football field and I'm the center and I'm preparing to pass the ball to the quarterback. Right. And I'm holding the ball. And what is the word that I say before I pass the ball? Do you know? Huh? Hike. Right? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I felt that deep when I said that. Um, uh -huh. Four brothers, I know my football. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go on the air. Hunt, hunt. And get yes, the yes. Yeah. No, my. But difference. if I go, but if I do it from the throat, hike, hike. Oh, I sound I like Mickey Mouse. I could be using the breath, but it sounds yeah. terrible. No. But if, but if I relax, yeah. if I, if I put myself almost in the position of yawning, hike. Yeah. Huh. Now I have something oh. Oh. powerful to deliver. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because the, um, I can think of, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but I can think of getting really excited about a subject in our Sunday church at our house. And next thing you know, my voice is going higher and higher and, yes. and strainer yes. and strainer. And yes. So. I would say find your height huh. and, and lean into it. It's a very relaxed, you know, what I have to do to get that out powerfully is I have to relax. Okay. If I tense to get it out, I'm going to have a weak sound. But if I will relax, if I intentionally find the resting place in my physical body, okay. and then allow the tone to come in full volume. I notice uh, some women don't like coming full volume. Do you well, know what I'm anyone listening here can see the difference between your voice and my voice. <laughs> 
Go ahead. It's okay. I, it's, I, go, you, I go live for a reason, just for I you. I truly believe you can find a different location and resonance for your voice. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that will fill out more okay. than you want it to than it is right now. That's cool. How That's so awesome. However, okay. However, we all have different pitch and different timbre. And that's by design as well. Yeah, that's good. Um, not everyone is a, a full voiced person and, and that's okay. And I understand that. Yeah. The point is to use your voice in a health, in the fullest, healthiest way you can for your voice. So, um, but I'm really just fascinated about the trauma because not just because I fell down the stairs, but I can, I can think of some trauma recent. I can think of some trauma, you know, from years ago. And I, I, listen, we don't want to carry on. We don't have to live in the drama, the trauma. And I know I talk about that on the identity side, but who would have thought, I mean, this is just a God interview. Who would have thought that would affect our voice? You're a mom. And you want to command your kids' attention with yeah. love. Yeah. And if you're squeaking, squeaking, they're, all they're going to hear is, oh, mom's squeaking. Who cares what right, she says? Right, right. I had one uh, ment uh, upper level mentor who said, I get it when you talk about marketing your voice. She says, I may not be online, but I'm going to market my voice at my home. I'm like, ah, oh, you got it. So... I hope this is helping someone understand that we can come from that place of rest yes. and it can come and it could actually affect our voice. Like I'm not there yet. I can yeah. feel the strain on my voice. I can, and one minute I'm trying to focus up here and the next minute I'm, sure. so I guess I'm tensing, tensing up because sure. I'm trying to be perfect and do yes. it right. Cause I want yes. my voice to come back. I'm just uh -huh. being a uh -huh. spazzy patient for, <laughs> Dr. Grace, she's got lots of grace though to give you. I know that. So let me, uh, I don't know if I want to sh shift channels, but um, share in a, in a little bit how you teach that online. And then at the end of the program, we'll give them a chance to uh, register for your class. Well, I have begun, um, uh, of course, the Holy Spirit spoke to me in prayer um, and I don't say that to sound super spiritual, but I asked. So, so that's how he spoke, I asked. And um, so I, I said, Lord, what is the next step that you would have for me to take? And I really felt like he said, I need you to put your stuff in an online course so that people can have a resource, a tool in their toolkit, and they don't have to rely on my presence and availability. And, um, and so what I've done is I've condensed many years of teaching into six concise, uh, very practical lessons that give you tangible materials to use in order to strengthen your voice. And uh, it's really practical, it's really physical, and, um, and it's usable for anyone. So, um, so if you have, you know, a half hour to designate, then you go through and you practice these skills with me and you can feel the change. I mean, it literally shifts your body into alignment so you can produce what you need to produce. It's not just, uh, for speakers, but musically, I, I, anyone yes. who's a singer, oh, yeah. this sounds like something that would really help them. I see a couple of yes, singers yes. watching us live and. Yeah. Uh, that's exciting. And I primarily train singers, but this is so important for speakers. So important. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. See, I put yeah. myself on the chopping floor. Yeah. Or whatever. You want to know something interesting, though? I want to, I want to pass this on to see how you um, evaluate the vocal thing. Um, when I help people find their voice, it's really their identity, but a lot of times their voice comes from their identity of something that's lined in their DNA. Mm -hmm. For example, when I was little, the modern technology was my dad's tape recorder and a microphone, and he hid it under the bed because he didn't want us kids. Well, I found it, and I spent hours in my bedroom, you know, Walter Cronkite, Carol <laughs> Burnett, Howard Cosell, do you remember Monday Night Football? 
<laughs> and then I would put it back. So then growing up, I was Catholic. I love to find steps where I could go up the steps and be the priest or yeah. be the preacher. Yeah. I got saved and it turned into the preacher. Yeah. And then I remember living at this one house. We uh, didn't have good steps for a for a, you know, it was just too small. I wanted to get up there. So we lived in the apple orchard and I'd take an apple cart, turn it this way, not this way, you know, where it's shaky. And I'd get on top of that apple cart and I'd preach, tell the birds and the bees how to be saved after I bored my younger brother, who was my play, playmate. Mm -hmm. And then I think, well, think about that. I had 15 and a half years as a radio announcer. And then now I open up my apple device my apple computer yeah, yeah. yeah and and i just to me i just say god i always want to be in the sweet spot yes the sweet spot is in good relationship come on best relationship be a friend of the holy spirit yes lord yes. and then walking in purpose of what i believe is my purpose mm -hmm. and i i used to talk about purpose but it's so out there and that's when god gave me find your voice and share your voice. Cause if you find your voice literally, and I think figuratively, I'm, sure. I'm finding yes. more meaning in yes. the literal yes. sense. You are truly being able, your voice is inter intertwined into your very DNA. Mm -hmm. It's like this. This is the way I like to look at it. Grace. It's called, it's like your voice in your heart is connected to the hum of heaven. And right. this is the hum. Yeah. You get up in the morning and you're, yeah, I'm not a morning person until I have a cup of coffee and take that first sip of your coffee. And what do you do? Hmm. Yes. And if you think about it, hmm, that's probably where your very strength of your vocal cord comes to help me. Give me an amen on that one. Yes. So as you're living in the sweet spot with your voice aligned to the very hum of heaven, I believe that's your place where you rest to run with yes. your voice and in your lifestyle. Yes. Now you say rest. I mean, I remember my husband said, you just need to rest about 10 years ago. And I'm like, yeah. why well, he's talking a foreign language? I've got this marketing to learn. I've got this to do. Why does he mean rest? Well, I had to lose a really good job in marketing mm -hmm. to totally understand what that rest means. And as I'm yeah. sharing this, Grace, I feel this is related to my voice even. Absolutely. So you rest. How do you rest? Well, instead of embracing the suck of today, excuse my expression, but it is sucky. Sure. Don't do that. Sure. Be like Sarah, Hebrews 11, 11. She yeah. emb her faith mm -hmm. embraced the miracle working power of God. Yes. Even though she couldn't conceive even though, yeah. but this is what she did. The authority of her faith rested. Here's that rest again, rested in the promises of God. And she tapped into his faithfulness. So God gives us a chance to rest by embracing or by our faith, embracing his miracle power by walking according to the authority of our faith. Mm -hmm. And our authority of our faith is resting in the promises of God. We know his promises are yes and amen. So yeah. it's, that's the rest. And then the run is tapping into his faithfulness. The run involves making those declarations. Use your voice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, to make With declarations powered by the sure. prophetic, powered by the word of God. And I They're just believe different. someone needed to hear that, that even yeah. their very voice, I know when I go around the house saying, hallelujah, praise God. I just been declaring out loud. If I just say hallelujah, I know it's a different voice. Yeah. 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 But back to that, the, uh, the, the sweet spot, the hum of heaven that God wired in your very DNA. Yes. Not everyone wants to talk into a microphone. I understand that, but your voice could come in a, in a post, your voice could come on the, again, to a sweet worker who has to have a mask. Your sure. voice could say, Hey, you know what? That mask does not hide your beautiful smile. And then you sure. watch their eyes light up. Sure. Okay. I and got a little passionate. Teresa in walking around the house saying, Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, that's or good. Point. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You yeah, should. there's force. There's finding yeah. your authority is in your voice. 
Yeah. And that's part of the releasing of the trauma, the physical Ooh. trauma is because you take back the authority of your voice. When you've been traumatized, either physically or oh. emotionally or mentally, Come you on. shrink back oh. if the physical and God wants to break that off of you and release yes. his breath through yes. you. You know, yes. there's a difference. So there's, good. A, there's a power shift. That is so good. And you know, I really believe strongly, this is going to kind of take a right turn on this, but you may be someone who could help someone. You don't have to be a vocal coach. Your voice can carry power in this, yeah. for someone's life. Yes. Dave and I always say our ceiling is your floor. Absolutely. And I'm taking a left turn because I'm very passionate about this and she's not paying me to do this. <laughs> but the, Lisa Bevere has this uh, Godmother. It's, a, Love it. yes. it's not only a book, it's a six-week a study. And this is what I want to say. You understand the hum of heaven. You've been walking through some trauma and the drama, but you've been healed. You know what it's like to have your back against the wall as a single mom and kids driving you crazy. You know what it's like too. I believe God's raising a mom movement up. Lana Valser yeah. talked about this, um, Grace, about- Come on, yes, ago. I read that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she actually did a video just for this yeah. one, and she was for the daughters of God who were experiencing tough times. It was perfect yeah. timing for me. Yes. And then, uh, I don't think they got together and talked. I just believe God speaks for yeah. you. And then along came Lisa, and I love Lisa anyway. I do too. And- what a treasure for the body of Christ. She yes. Is. And what a treasure to raise up women who will speak. My, yeah. one of my, when, in 2009, I was kind of digging the soil of what it, we see now. No one, my, my theme was harness the power of the internet to spread your message. And no one in yeah. ministry really got it. And they had right. poverty spirits. Mm -hmm. So I feel like now here we are 2020, they better know. Come on. You know, they better yeah. know what it's like to live stream. But, but better than that, y'all, Zoom takes the, the church out of the box and you get to be yeah. real with people. I think God loves to be out of the box. Right. So I've always been very passionate about interviewing messengers, generals, releasing identity truth, true yeah. grit, yeah. like yeah. grace. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe if you're watching on the... Um, Redeem Your Voice, my members, this is something that is a continuation of your healing. You have a voice. I used to say in 2009, and now it's the same. Speak. The world is listening right. online at home. I had to add yeah. the at home. So stay in your lane. Find the wow. sweet spot. And I believe as you stay yeah. in your lane, something will happen. Have you noticed my voice I'm focusing on it because the message is right here. And I hope yes. my voice is a little deeper. Yes. But I really have a heart for you. Yes, I want you to sound great. No, I don't want you to sound like Mickey Mouse when you're trying to train your kids. But I believe in you. I believe God has set you apart for such a time as this. I believe you have a voice. Yeah. And maybe God's saying, okay, girl, let's see you go live on Facebook and share some of that wisdom. Don't worry about your voice, just share. And then off camera, do the, your exercises. Yeah. <laughs> but I want, I want people to be able to get their voice in the right place. Yeah. So now, will you please share how they can sign up a little more in detail about your class? Because I think there's someone saying, okay, shut up, Teresa. I want to I I hear from Grace. You sure, may not be thank saying you. That. It's okay if you do. Yeah, no one's going to tell you to shut up. Okay. <laughs> so um, thank you for that invitation to say. Um, Grace Note Worship Studio is my Facebook page. Grace Note Worship Studio. And if you go on to Grace Note Worship Studio, you will see the link to sign up for the six-week course. And when you sign up, you will be invited into the private Facebook group that will remain open and remain private um, only for those who have purchased this course. I will close the course September 15th okay. and I will reopen it again in November, but it will be double the price. I, can so I really that. want to give people um, an introductory 
rate. And what you're getting is a massive amount of content for the price of one month of awesome. private lessons, which I could never pour all of this content into a private lesson because each individual is so nuanced. And in addition to that, on, uh, on Tuesday night is when we are having class. And then on Thursday, I come on for a Q and A oh, and I'm awesome. able to deal with the personal issues that have arisen over the two days of practicing what I supplied. And uh, it's a really good time to find those nuanced areas and be able to touch on them a little bit in a group context. The benefit of the group context is that you're learning from hearing other people. And when you can hear what it's supposed to sound like, it shifts something internally and you can mimic what you hear. It's a really That's excellent. Awesome. One thing that I want to say, if you sign up for Grace's class, I believe in this, pray about it. And if God says go, this is what's going to happen. Let me give you an example. I, I, I invested myself and I was about that time to find another coach. I'm not going to say her name because this is about grace, but this is what God told me. He said, yeah, that's the one, but think of it this way. She may be ahead powering the boat, but you're behind water skiing, having a heck of a time. You're getting splashed by her anointing. You're jumping waves under her guidance. And you're having one heck of a time as you water ski, as you learn. That's what we always say to the mentor, uh, Kingdom Mentor Academy. I think a lot of them get this. Well, if they miss a bunch of classes or not, they know they're under the covering of Papa Fire and Teresa. They know they have access to, hey, let me jump in and have a talk with you. But that's what it's going to be. That's what I want you to think about when you get behind Grace's boat. And she's been doing this a long time. So her anointing may make your progress faster because you're water skiing behind her boat. You're not only learning, but you're getting splashed by her anointing her purpose, her meaning. And there's nothing like that. I mean, I, I found that coach and she was just talking um, marketing, but I felt like she was preaching because wow. that was the way I was translating it. She is a kingdom person. She wasn't saying Jesus, Jesus, but it was like, Oh, I feel like I'm at church, but it's not church. It's my kind of church. We'll talk marketing. You know, you see what I'm saying? Am I, am I, am I making sense? So any uh any parting thoughts or words i think look into that camera and talk to that stressed out person who really yeah their voice is shattered they've been through a shattering life mm -hmm. they want to step up to the plate and swing with their voice but they just feel that too many lost games and being beat up has kept them speak to that person yeah, so there was a time I was just like that. Um, I was young, I was in my 20s, I was in college, and um, I found myself asleep for three days, could barely get out of my bed. And um, I thought something must be really wrong with me, this isn't me. And I went to see a counselor on our campus, and he looked at me and said, Grace, when was the last time you rested? And I said, I just told you, I have slept for three days straight. He said, that wasn't the question. I want to know when you rested, not when you slept. And there's something about coming into an intentional position of rest. Psalm 23, the psalmist said, he makes you to lie down in green pastures and restores your soul. Jesus said, I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So there's something that God wants to give you in your soul area that's gonna draw from you the rivers of living water that are dormantly laying, but still very much alive in your belly because he said he put it in your belly rivers of living water and so i love what um 
that passage of scripture where I believe it was Jacob was instructed to go redig the ancient wells of his fathers and to redig those places. And I feel like God would call you to go back and redig those wells of the dreams that you had before you felt worn out, before you felt attacked, before you felt defeated and traumatized and broken. I, I think this is the season to go redig those places and allow the Holy Spirit to breathe on them again and find what God wants to do in this season in a fresh way that may not look or sound like what you thought it was going to look or sound like. But what Ephesians 3.20 says is it's going to be even more than you could have ever asked, thought, or imagined. And I don't think there's any room to sit back and procrastinate on it. I feel like we're in a season right now where God is moving things swiftly. It's a time of acceleration. It's a time of purpose. And I feel like it's a pivotal moment. Teresa uses that word pivotal a lot. I feel like this is a pivotal moment where you can say, yes, yes, Lord, whatever that looks like, I'm going there or you can shrink back. And the Bible says, don't be like those that shrink back because there's a warning to those that shrink back. There's a warning. And I don't, is that in Colossians? I can't remember where that is. Look it up. Shrink back in your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> don't be like those that shrink back. Today is the day of salvation. It's the day to come into wholeness. It's the day to come into the fullness of what God has purposed for mm -hmm. you. So whatever that looks like, does that look like, okay, I've been really intimidated by this voice thing. I'm afraid to speak in front of somebody. I'm afraid to sing in front of somebody. What if my voice cracks? What if it breaks? What if, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, stop. Because quite frankly, it's not really about you. Because we're not building our own kingdom, Come we're building on. his. Mm. And, and it's for his kingdom to be established in the earth. And Jesus is the one on the platform. Jesus is the one building, we're building the name of Jesus in the earth. And in order to build this, the, the, the name of Jesus on the earth, you can't put a bushel over your light. Yeah. You're gonna have to just shine. So you're going to have to stand in your authority and shine. And so you're going to have to do the work of cultivating and fanning and blowing into flame that uh, the gift of God that's inside. So good. Mm, so good. Pray to girl. <laughs> well, that's a great way to end on this. Um, and just really uh, want to bless those that are watching live or recorded. And a lot of people of grace ask for the link. Well, um, this is awesome. I'm going to say goodbye to our Facebook friends. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.